president of being happy is dying, sir. If you don't save his life, no one will ever be happy again. Damn it, don't you think I know that? Everyone knows the president of being happy is the most important person in the world. Now hand me the damn scalpel. Scalpel? Forceps. Forceps? Pliers. P Pliers, doctor? Are you sure? Damn it, Nurse Barnav Bar Barnavar. I'm a trained medical professional. Now hand me the damn pliers. Pliers, doctor. Oh my god! You've killed him! Now no one will ever be uh, happy ever again! Oh no! I'm so depressed now, not only because the president of being happy is dead, but also because I've just killed a man! Oh, oh no! no! Has this ever happened to you? Well, maybe next time you should have played Surgeon Simulator 2. Surgeon Simulator 2 is a casual simulator where the gameplay revolves around the daunting task of doing a series of very precise things in a comically imprecise way. Reminiscent of games like Quap or Getting Over It. In the story mode, which is the mode that we're going to be focusing on for the sake of this review, you take on the role of a mysterious participant in a sprawling laboratory who's learning the fine art of surgery. Quick note from Grizz, that's me, what's up? Uh, this game supports up to four players, but uh, I played it solo. Because I have no friends, and if you're watching this, I'm guessing you don't either, but I just wanted to get that out there before any comments are like, Grizz, it's better with friends! And I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is, but this is a review for Neat, so shut the fuck up. All right, back to the review. But is everything as it seems in this laboratory? No, everything is not as it seems. As the story goes on, you get further into the lab and things happen, blah, blah, blah. Who cares about story anyway in a game like this? I'm not going to spoil it, because why would I? But the story is a side note at best and actually kind of hinders the overall game experience at worst. That's a point I'll get to later, though. For now, all you need to know is that you're a man or woman with an arm. With this arm, you solve various physics puzzles, such as, but not limited to, finding fuses for fuse boxes, Finding fuses for fuse boxes. Finding fuses for fuse boxes, and last but not least, finding fuses for fuse boxes. The over-reliance on this gimmick is actually mind-numbing, but here I am getting ahead of myself. See what I did there? You'll also perform various surgeries on the T-posing party boy known as Bob, using a combination of tools to remove various parts of old Bobby boy and syringes to stop the bleeding and pump him back up full of that sweet, sweet aforementioned blood. When you inevitably remove the wrong arm, there were things about this game I liked, things about this game I didn't. There's also the matter of whether or not I'd recommend it is worth the buy. So let's get right into it, gamers. Where did I go wrong? I lost a friend. The game at its core is a quirky experience that doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's exactly the tone you need to set for something like this. Whether you're violently shaking the camera to try and get rid of a stupid fucking ribcage, or unwittingly pulling out the wrong organs with a hacksaw, there's something undeniably charming about the presentation of this game. The juxtaposition of over-the-top morbidity mixed with bright, cheerful colors and an overall upbeat tone converge to create an experience that is, in a word, unique. The main gimmick is the use of your floating noodle arm that you must flail around in an often vain attempt to do... Uh, stuff. Why won't the leg come off? You control the palm direction and grip with the mouse and the height by holding down shift plus the mouse. It might seem obvious, but I'll point this out anyway. Uh, this makes even the most simple of tasks far more difficult than they need to be, and it's actually pretty cool. This is by far my favorite part of the game, and while it seems obvious that it should be, considering that the whole game kind of rests upon this as a hook, I just wanted to toss it out there because it just works really well. When you're trying to chop off Bob's head and accidentally pull out his lungs instead and go into full panic mode trying to get more blood into him before he dies, uh, these are the moments that really stand out as memorable to me about my playthrough. The maps obviously have a lot of care and attention to detail thrown into them. There's always something to look at behind every corner, and they all feel different enough from one another that even though you're going through the same repetitious task of essentially spawn Bob, identify what needs to be replaced in Bob, remove things from Bob, replace things in Bob, 
it never really feels like you're doing exactly the same thing. There's always a door to open, a switch to power on, a new room to explore. It helps break up the monotony of what would otherwise be a pretty redundant experience, though it doesn't totally save it from that either, but more on that point later. The difficulty curve feels right on the money for the kind of game this is trying to be. As you get a better grasp of the controls, the game itself continues to up the ante with new challenges, more bobs to dissect with more parts in need of transplants, more platforming puzzles to figure out, and larger areas to explore. As soon as you start to get comfortable, it tosses something new at you, which helps the sense of linear progression in the game. Dude, this leg just will not come off. Oh, oops. Okay. Somewhere alone in the bitterness and I would have stayed up. Time for the moment you've all been waiting for. The Grizzly Guy Gaming Special. Complaining on the internet? All right, what the fuck is with this story, dude? Like, straight up, it's like they don't understand what makes their game fun. Like, it's trying to be Portal, but it isn't funny or new because Portal already did it, dude! Like, the moment I start to get into the gameplay, which is actually fun, I get ripped out to listen to some British guy tell me that the cake is a lie, and then I'm stuck crouch walking through air vents for 15 minutes to try to find fucking fuses. Which, oh my god, talk about an overused gimmick. What the hell? You, it's like, go into an area, find three fuses. And then you find the three, then you go to the next area, and it's like, hee-hee, you need one of the fuses from the last area. What a puzzle, am I right? No, you aren't right. You're wrong. This whole goddamn operation is wrong. This isn't a puzzle, dude. This is busy work. Like, okay, I'm gonna break something down to the audience right now. You, the audience. If you ever want to create a puzzle, like, puzzle creation 101 right here, right? The answer can't be immediately obvious. It can't just be like, hey, you're missing a key. Go find it dude that's not a fucking puzzle man that's busy work which i'm pretty sure i already said but i need to repeat again to get it through everyone's heads like this game is full of that for literally no reason dude and it takes away from the actual things i enjoy to such a degree that and i'm being sincere right now if i were ign i'd have to rate this game seven out of ten which is ostensibly good by all metrics in the real world, but you know when IGN is throwing out a seven, you fucked up somewhere. I won't spoil the story on principle, you know, I already said that, but I could, and it wouldn't matter at all, and that sucked. I understand the game is more than that, and that people can easily sit here and say, hold on now, Grizz, the game also has replayability, though, and other modes outside of story, plus even the story missions you can replay for better grades, and also it's more fun with friends, I, why are you so so upset and that's a fair point just kidding no it isn't this review is based on the single player experience which by the way i already mentioned at the start so keep up the devs allude to the fact that you can play with friends now but nowhere does it say that this kind of sucks without friends to play with but here you go i'll let you in on a secret this kind of sucks without friends to play with and that kind of sucks in general also remember when i said before that the changing environment helps break up the monotony of the tasks that you are made to do in order to progress the game and then i said more on that point later here it is. I lied. Well, not really, but the environment itself becomes more and more of a chore as the game drags on. It starts taking out the fun, pull this guy's liver out gameplay and replaces it in favor of lackluster, stack a box on another box to get to a vent, to go into another room, to turn a lever, to open a vent, to go into a different room, to hit a button, to drop a limb into a different room. Okay, now backtrack through all the stuff you just did. Go grab that limb that dropped. Go back to the original room kind of gameplay and honestly it's not really fun it just kind of feels like it's there to be there and honestly that fits in perfectly with this theme of the devs forgetting what made their game fun in the first place this might be more enjoyable with friends for sure and i'll see that point but as i touched on earlier single player story is going to be like 99 percent of people's portal into this game going in blind and if they're anything like me they're probably going to pick this up play it by themselves beat it in five hours and then wonder why they spent 25 dollars on it i mean I don't wonder why I did this, really. I'm a guy to squeeze YouTube content out of anything I can get my hands on, so the answer is pretty obvious. If you aren't that, though, why would you do this? You'd probably feel pretty dumb. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. But you know what? Let's actually get right into that point while I'm on the topic. Now I would have stayed up with you all night had I known how to save a life. No! Or yes, I guess. I don't actually care how you spend your money unless it's on weed. 
I will say, though, Sim City Surgeon is one of the most aggressively okay games I've ever played. It has so many good ideas and genuinely fun and interesting mechanics that it sucks to see it derailed by a boring story and gameplay that can't figure out what it's doing. It's like it's stuck halfway in between a physics puzzle game and a physics precision game, and it doesn't really do either of those things in a good enough way to justify the other not being that enjoyable. If you got friends to play with and y'all want to pony up the cash, I'm sure you can make like Markiplier and overreact for some sick content. <laughs> right in the dick. In the dick. Get it in the dick. He needs more. I kid. But on a serious note, this does feel more like a game you could watch your favorite YouTuber or streamer play and enjoy more than you actually sitting down in a dark, loveless room by yourself with Surgery Simp 2 on one monitor and Nanner's videos blasting out the other like the D-Gen you are. Don't buy this game. Perform real surgery on real unsuspecting co-workers or sleeping neighbors instead. At least that way, you'll have someone to share the experience with. Review over. Alrighty guys, that's the video. I just want to give a big shout out to my editor Shatter, because without him, this video wouldn't have happened in the timely manner that it did. So uh, thanks to him, his links are down below. Uh, make sure you check him out. And if you have any suggestions, any topics, any games, anything like that that you want to see me cover on this channel, uh, comment them below. That's it, dudes. See you on the next one.